the fort. You're loose, you're loose. <laughs> my name is Harrison McIntyre. This is my friend Luke. He thinks he just got hit in the face with whipped cream because he lost at a game of chance. But in reality, I made that happen. Because I spent the last several months planning, designing, prototyping, and programming to build this. A completely rigged pie face game that pairs with your phone via Bluetooth. Although hacking a game like this may seem as simple as attaching the throwing arm to a servo, doing this would present two main problems. First, the servo propelling the arm would look much different from the mechanics of the game propelling the arm. And second, the servo would make a lot of noise while turning. Given these two problems, I decided to go with another method that required some reverse engineering. The yellow module you see here sits within the plastic housing, and it contains all of the game's mechanics. The game operates like this. The gear shown is rotated when you turn the yellow knob on the side of the game, and the purple lever represents the throwing hand. There is an inner track on the gear that the red idler slides across. Also on this inner track, there are these tiny wedges. These wedges are the triggering mechanism for the game. Once the idler is forced upwards by one of these wedges, the throwing hand is released and the pie is thrown. This means that pie face isn't actually random, it's just designed to feel that way. In the example you see here, there are only two wedges, but in reality, there are many more of them scattered in a random fashion throughout the inner track of the gear. What I did to hack the game was I took out the mechanical activation by sanding down these wedges. I also installed a servo motor, with one end of a fishing line attached to the servo and the other attached to the idler. Now, no matter how many times the user turns the knob, the arm won't ever be triggered unless my servo pulls up on the idler. This means I can trigger the game if and when I want. You'll notice this method still uses a servo, only in this case the servo will be turning for a much shorter duration, therefore making less noise. Here's a look under the hood of my V2. This is my second iteration, the main components of which consist of a servo motor, a limit switch, an Arduino Nano, a Bluetooth module tucked away in my mess of wires, and a 5 volt USB battery pack mounted underneath. The main problem I had with my first iteration was I mounted the servo motor, and consequently the fishing line, to the purple section of the game. This meant that one end of the fishing line was attached to the purple section, and the other was attached to the yellow section. This made it impossible to separate the two halves more than a few inches, and made it extremely difficult to service the game. I remedied this in my second iteration by mounting all of the electronics to a central belly pan attached to the yellow top section, thus allowing the two halves to separate completely. It's great that we can trigger the game if and when we want, but I really wanted to go the extra mile to ensure my game was as close to the real thing as possible, and that's where the limit switch comes in. As you can see, I've installed the limit switch so that it is triggered once every time the user turns the knob. This allows me to program the Arduino to trigger the arm at the exact moment the user turns the knob, just like in the original game. I also added a delayed activation feature, which allows me to hit a button on my phone, and then a specified number of turns later, the arm is triggered. Now without further ado, I present the fruits of my labor. Three, four... <gasps> oh my god. Yes! Oh. <laughs> I thought you got out if you died. Two times. Yeah, you get out of Harrison. Ah! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> get an F. Uno. Dos. Tres. <laughs> Cuatro. Cinco! I had lots of fun working on this project. And I'm happy to report that through every use thus far, my machine has flown completely under everyone's radar. Altogether, the build cost adds up to just over $50, which I think is a small price to pay to wield the power of a Roman Emperor in the Colosseum.